Kill Sheet Introduction The basic concept of a kill sheet is simple, the amount of drilling fluid and additives pumped down hole must be equal to the amount that returns to the surface. When drilling fluid is lost due to leaks or other issues, the well may become overbalanced, leading to a blowout. To prevent this, the drilling team needs to use a kill sheet to calculate the appropriate volume and density of the drilling fluid to pump down hole to balance the well. Kill sheets use a variety of formulas to calculate the volume, density, pressure, and circulation rate of the drilling fluid and additives being pumped down hole. For example, the volume of fluid being pumped can be calculated by multiplying the flow rate by the time, while the density can be calculated by dividing the weight by the volume. Other important parameters that must be tracked include the pump strokes per minute and the pressure at various points in the well bore. Please prepare the following. IWCF Formula Sheet, available on www.iwcf.org. Blank Kill Sheet Form, available on www.iwcf.org. Calculator. Please practice to solve the example in the next slide. Example. Please read carefully the data given in the example to be able to solve the calming kill sheet. Formation strength data. For this section, you need to fill in the blocks using the data from the example kill sheet data pages above. For A, you use the surface leak off pressure from the formation strength test data section. For B, you use the mud weight used during the surface leak off pressure test from the same section. C, is calculated by plugging, A, and, B, into the formula given to you in the box. Caution, if you do your calculations correctly, you'll come up with 15.6844 ppg. Since mud weights are generally recorded to one decimal place, tenths, you'll need to round 15.6844 ppg. However, you can't round up because you will exceed the maximum allowable mud weight if you round up to 15.7. You must round down to 15.6 ppg to record the proper maximum allowable mud weight on the kill sheet. Mud Pump Data and Slow Pump Rate Pressures The mud pump pressure section of the kill sheet is filled out almost entirely from information from the data sheet you are given at the start of the test. The displacement per stroke of the pump is given to you as well as the slow pump rate data through the riser and the choke line. The only thing you will need to calculate in this section is the choke line friction loss which is simply the difference between the slow pump rate in the choke line, 900, and the slow pump rate in the riser, 780, equals 120. Current Well Data The information for this section is also pulled from the example kill sheet problem data. Marine riser and choke line length are given to you on the data sheet in the internal capacities section. Drilling mud weight is given to you in the kick data section. Casing size and measured depth, MD, and total vertical depth, TVD, are given to you at the very top of the kill sheet problem as well as the hole size and hole depth in MD and TVD. Caution, remember the difference between total vertical depth, TVD, and measured depth, MD. Measured depth is used when calculating volumes of fluids. TVD is used when calculating hydrostatic pressures. For example, you would use MD when calculating the volume of fluid in the drill pipe but you would use TVD when calculating the hydrostatic pressure of the fluid in the drill pipe. Drill string volume. Calculating the drill string volume is as simple as plugging the length of your drill pipe, heavy weight drill pipe, have I wall or HWDP, and drill collar into the drill string volume section. The capacities for all three are given to you in the problem in the internal capacities section. The only tricky thing is figuring out the drill pipe length. Since the length of heavy weight drill pipe and drill collars are given to you, all you need to do is subtract these two values from the total MD of the well to find the drill pipe length. In our example problem this would be 10,450 to 723, 912 equals 8,815. Once you've plugged in the length of each section of drill string and the capacities you simply multiply each row to find the barrels of mud in each section and add them up to find the total drill string volume. 
after you find the total drill string volume, 165 BBLS in our example, you divide the BBLS by the pump displacement per stroke, 0.12 BBLS in our example, to figure out how many strokes of the mud pump are needed to completely displace the drill string, 165 slash 0.12 equals 1375. Once you've calculated the pump strokes needed to displace the riser, you divide the total strokes by the strokes per minute, SPM, of the mud pump to find out how much time would be needed to totally displace the volume of the drill string. Since our mud pump is pumping at 45 SPM we get 1375 slash 45 SPM equals 30.5 minutes. Open hole and total annula slash chocoline volume. This section is filled out very similar to the section above except now you're calculating the volume of mud in the open hole and casing minus the space taken up by the drill pipe, HWDP, and drill collars. You're given the length of the drill collars in the data sheet for the problem. To find the length of DP and HWDP in the uncast section of the well, the open hole section, you need to first find out how much open hole you have. You do this by subtracting the shoe TVD from the TVD of the entire well, 10,450 to 7,800 equals 2,650 feet of open hole. Since 912 feet of this open hole is filled with drill collar, the rest, 2,650, 912 equals 1738, is the length of drill pipe slash HWDP in the hole. Total well system volume. The total well system volume is calculated by adding values, D, and, I, from above which gives you 624.8 BBLS. Divide this by your pump displacement per stoke, 0.12 BBLS slash stroke, to calculate the total strokes this represents, 5207 strokes. From here divide this by the SPM you're using, 45 SPM, and this will tell you how long it will take to displace the total well system volume with the mud pump, 115.7 minutes. The active surface volume is given to you in the data sheet so you record it in this section and then divide it by the pump displacement, 0.12 BBLS slash stroke, to find out how many strokes it would take to displace the active surface volume. Total active fluid system volume is calculated by adding the previous two volumes and strokes together. Marine riser length is given to you on the data sheet in the internal capacities section as well as the annulus capacity with drill pipe in the riser in the annulus capacities between section. Caution, make sure you use the riser capacity with drill pipe in the riser versus the riser capacity that is listed in the internal capacities section which does not account for lost capacity due to the drill pipe being in the riser. The kick data section is filled with information directly off the kill sheet data page in the kick data section. Kill mud weight. Kill mud weight is calculated by plugging the numbers into the formula provided in the section. You're already given shut in drill pipe pressure, SIP, the TVD of the well and the current mud weight. All you need to do is plug the numbers in and calculate the mud weight needed to kill the well. If you've run the numbers correctly you should get a calculated kill weight mud of 12.5121 ppg. Kill mud is usually recorded to one decimal place so it would be natural to want to round this value down to 12.5 ppg. However you always round up kill mud weight to the nearest tenth so 12.5121 would be rounded to 12.6 ppg. The reason being if you made it 12.5 ppg, there wouldn't be enough hydrostatic pressure created in the well to kill the well. Caution, remember you always round up kill mud weight to the nearest tenth and you always round down your maximum allowable mud weight to the nearest tenth. Initial circulating pressure. You calculate initial circulating pressure, ICP, by simply adding the dynamic pressure loss through the riser, 780 in our example, to the shut in drill pipe pressure, 550, given us 1330 psi in our example. This is the pressure you expect to see on the drill pipe pressure gauge when first starting to circulate out the kick. Final circulating pressure. You calculate the final circulating pressure by dividing your new kill mud weight by the current mud weight and then multiply this value by the same dynamic pressure loss you used above. 
This is the pressure you expect to see on the drill pipe gauge once all of the kill mud is pumped down the drill string and is starting to enter the annulus. Side drop per 100 strokes. This section is where you calculate the pressure drop per every 100 strokes of the mud pump as you start pumping heavier kill weight mud down the hole. All you do is find the difference between the ICP and FCP that you calculated above and then plug that number into the next formula where you multiply it by 100 and divide it by the E, which is the number of strokes needed to displace the drill sting. When you start pumping kill weight mud down the hole you need to be at or above the ICP to ensure you don't let more formation fluids into the hole. As the drill string is displaced with the heavier weight mud, and therefore creating more hydrostatic pressure, you'll need to adjust the drill pipe pressure down using the choke to keep the bottom hole pressure constant. In other words, for every 100 strokes you pump with your mud pumps the drill pipe pressure should drop 34.5 psi, based on our example kill sheet. Pressure per stroke table. Once you've calculated your ICP, FCP, and pressure drop per 100 strokes, you can fill out the stroke slash pressure table, step down chart, to the right. In the left hand column start at zero and increase in 100 stroke increments until you get to the total number of strokes needed to displace the drill string, 1375 in our example. On the right hand side start with your ICP and decrease the pressure by 34.5 psi, calculated in the previous section, for every 100 strokes until you get to the FCP. It looks complicated but it really isn't after you've done it a couple times. Graphing the pressure drop from ICP to FCP. The last part of the ICWF kill sheet is plotting out the pressure drop per 100 strokes as you go from ICP to FCP when pumping kill weight mud down the drill string. It is usually not required on an actual IWCF exam but in case you wanted to know what it might look like, here you go.